We are live! Hello! Welcome to Tea Time with Tanya on Tuesday at 2 o'clock. And today's special guest is my very own father, my tatu. And we have people joining us. We have Julie. Hello, Amy. Hi, Beth. Hi, Nancy. Hello, Patty. Dennis is on here. Hi, everyone. Dennis Jimenez. <laughs> So you guys, this week is Father's Day on Sunday. So today I want to look at, um, Kim says, hi, Tatu. Oh. Dennis says, hello, Tatu and Tanya. Hi, Charnaltia. Lydia says, hello. Hi. Hello from Charlotte. <laughs> yes. So you guys know on Tea Time with Tanya, wherever you're tuning in from, please tell us where you're tuning in from and what you are drinking. Carol Krauchuk, hello. Hola. She's saying hola. Hola. Okay. <laughs> so I'm going to um, introduce um, tea. Um, the tea of today is mate. And this is why. Because my father was born and raised in Argentina. So we are going to introduce mate. If you too are drinking mate, please let us know. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, as, as we have our tea time right now, I'm going to be reading comments as we go along so my dad can see who's joining in and what they might be saying. So what is mate? Tatu, can you explain what mate is? Cheers! Cheers! <laughs> Happy uh, Father's Day! <laughs> Feliz Dia de Padre! We have two kinds of mate here. Yes. One is the grapefruit. You excavate the product inside and put the gerba. Oh, gerba is a plant that grows in Misiones, Argentina, yes. Brazil, Paraguay. Which even. is north, right? Northern Argentina. Northern Argentina, yeah. yeah. And Chile also. So those four countries, Uruguay, four countries that participate in this drink. In Argentina, my father used to wake up me about five o'clock in the morning. And set the fire, warm the water. It doesn't have to boil the water, just warm enough. Just warm, just warm. And if we would drink five o'clock to six o'clock in the morning. Sometimes the young people, the church will come, 30 to 40 young people. And one of these goes around and around. The whole circle. <laughs> the whole circle. And the girls have to serve. Yeah. The boys. <laughs> So, as my dad was saying, uh, my tatu, right, he, he's basically, those of you who drink mate, you guys know the tradition, but they would, they would pass the one mate, which if you are not familiar what, what mate is, it's the, the, the thing that you drink from. So my dad is, has a traditional mate, and then I'm using a grapefruit. And then we have, look at, we have another version here. This is made out of a tree. Okay, the traditional way that it started was out of a gourd. This is made out of a gourd. What's a gourd? It's kind of like a um, a, a, a tree. Yeah, a tree or like a like a, a squash. Oh, it grows. Yeah, it grows like a squash or like cabbage. Yeah, not cabbage. Uh, what is that? Pop, uh, like pumpkin a, pie. Pumpkin. A pumpkin. <laughs> <laughs> a pumpkin. Yes. So so then they also hollow it out and then they put the metal. And then, Tato, what do they call this? That's bombilla. Bombilla. And my dad says bombilla because in Argentina, Argentina, they speak Castellano. Yeah. Yes. We, we don't say bombilla. We yeah. say bombilla. Bombilla. <laughs> we don't say pollo. We say pollo. <laughs> so... Um, so as my dad was saying, he would get up at five in the morning with his father and they would drink mate for an hour. Can you imagine if we did that today? What a different lifestyle. And three times a day for lunch, another half hour, and before dinner, another half hour. That's a social part. No TV, no radio, just mata and fellowship. Yes. And um, everything in the afternoon would close usually, right? And still kind of does in Argentina, those of you who know the culture in Argentina. Oh yeah, they close the shop about 12 or one o'clock and open about four or five and then close at eight o'clock. 
Oh, uh, Carol says bombisha is a straw, but the mate straw is special because it has a filter at the end of it. Yes, and thank you, Carol. I wanted to show it, so you prompted me. See at the end of the straw, there's the little holes. So that's what filters the yedba. And the yedba, like my dad was saying, it's the, the tea that grows and they sell it in a little bag like this. And today, our first giveaway is going to be some mate, but I'm gonna make it easy for any of you. They also put mate in tea bags like this. So that's this right. is called mate cocido. So right now, I wanna give some out. The first person to put in the mate emoji. There is one, I just saw it. I just learned of it yesterday. The little mate emoji that looks like this, okay? There's a mate emoji. If you type it in, and I'm gonna keep my eye on the screen, I will mail one of these little mate cocido tea bags. Nancy, I see you. Nancy Rosales, you just won yourself some mate cocido. Yay. <laughs> it's on the mail. It's in the mail. Yeah. <laughs> so my dad, I'm going to share a couple things that I sh do at tea time with my dad, my tatu, and we always have a tea candle. Now, obviously you can see my tea candle today. It is a huge sunflower. Now, why did I choose this candle is because our familia in Argentina, we have a farm which my father was raised on and born. And tatu, can you share where that is? Where's the farm that you were born and raised? Oh, that's the place is uh, Chaco, Argentina, northern part of Buenos Aires, about 800 miles from the capital of uh, Argentina, Buenos Aires. And the immigrants came in the 30s, the forest, the field, and uh, not right now they're harvesting or uh, farming cotton, sunflowers, and wheat. It's very popular because uh, especially during the day, in the morning, all the sunflowers turn to the sun and it goes around all day. At sunset, they turn back to sunset. Yes, and the last time we were in Argentina uh, was two years ago in 2018. Correct. In October. And if you guys know, in the Southern Hemisphere, there's opposite seasons so the sunflower fields were wild and blooming and we went to them and we visited them and we saw all the faces turn that was to the november sun. yes november november mm -hmm. october november so right now it is winter there right winter time correct. yeah winter mm -hmm. there um kimberly says don't cry for me argentina yes oh. yes kimberly <laughs> in fact we have the flag right here and we have Emerson, M my cousin Emerson. Del Chaco. Yes, Chaco oh, Presente. Chaco Argentina. <laughs> he, he's the engineer there, the farmer. Yes, Emerson, <laughs> this is para ti. Yes. Salud. Salud. A Jorgito. Yes, Jorgito, you guys, is my dad's nephew. And your cousin, yeah? And my, oh yeah, and my cousin. <laughs> and Emerson, his, his son, and they're right here, and they're live with us. Talk about the cold version of mate. Yes, Carol, thank you. Um, so we say hello to our family from Argentina. So Carol reminded me, I love it. I'm prompting, getting prompts. So in the summer, they make terere. Ah, the terere, yes. right, which is reverse. You don't have to heat the water. And you just have to put ice in the water and you drink it cold. Yes, and sometimes they use lemonade or orange juice? Correct. Lemonade. And some people even use milk. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. A friend of mine came the other day with a thermos full of milk and we had to just drink. Wow. <laughs> In the mate. So that means that means like just like this, but you right. would do cold mate. I'm sorry, cold milk or lemonade or orange juice. Um speaking of, there's so many ways that they make the these beautiful Mates, right? I mean, they're so creative. But here's another form that you can travel with. So this together, my dad has a couple of these. There, uh, he has a thermos. So, like, say for example, we're going on a road trip or we're go going out on the farm. Right. What they would take is they take a thermos and then look. This I can literally take this off, and it's three pieces. 
Okay. Oh yeah, this is the Matera. The Matera, right? Right. And then this one says I can put the yerba right here, and then I stack it and I close the yerba, and then azúcar is sugar. So those of you who want sugar in the mate. Right. But sometimes, Dato, do you like to put honey? Oh yeah, with honey is ideal. Yes. Because it's natural. Yes, it's natural and it tastes well. And my dad is an amateur um, beekeeper. Oh, talking about beekeeping. Yes. Yeah. My father, uh, no, grandfather that came uh, with my mom from uh, Ukraine. He used to have about 40 beehives in the farm. And I learned from him how to keep the bees and how to extract the honey and of course enjoy the sweetness of the area of the of the land of the land of argentina <laughs> argentina <correct>. yes <laughs> and speaking of sweetness carol thank you again you are helping me segue at tea time we always have a tea snack and we're talking about sweet honey we're talking about, um, Carol has mentioned in the comments right here, sometimes instead of using sugar in the mate, you have um, snacks, like hard candy. This is so popular in Argentina. When you sit down for mate, it is a culture. It, uh, it's a cultural time. It's a time to stop and, and visit together, but also have sweet breads, hard candy, um, spoons of honey, and today, I have set aside some Ukrainian, um, and it could be Argentine too, bread, which we call, what do we call this, Tatu? Poppy seed. Poppy oh, seed roll. Sweet or bread with poppy seed. Yes. Correct. Or yes. mak, right? As mak. mak. Yeah, the Ukrainian call it mak. Mak. Yeah. You see this uh, sweetness? Yes. So this is something that you could accompany your mate with. Another thing, as you, we were saying, yes, yum, exactly, is look at, I have some Argentitas. What are these? Mm. These are straight from Argentina. They're little crackers from, yes, Tia Lydia says mac. Yes, my Tia mac. Lydia, who was also born and raised on the farm in Argentina, um, she knows all these things too. And she was just saying that this is called mac in Ukrainian. Hi, honey. Christian just is just joined. Hello. Facturas. Facturas are like sweetbreads and they make them with dulce de leche and everything. One of my father's favorites, right, Tatu? You like dulce de leche. Oh, yeah. Dulce de leche is the favorite from Argentina. It's like caramel. Yes. Caramel. Right? And if I think hopefully most of you guys know what dulce de leche is. It's like caramel, like just like my father was saying. And I'm going to put some of this dulce de leche on the Argentita cracker. So you could do this. And you could have it plain or you could have it with some some meat or cheese, right? Correct, cheese uh, will be ideal with the dulce de leche. Yes, and they also make little sandwichitos, or, but usually facturas, like small sweetbreads. Yes, dulce de leche, very good. So we are eating some mac. Are you guys having any tea snacks with your tea? <laughs> <laughs> if you are, please type it in. Okay. Right now, I'm going to introduce my dad to our culture card. Every time I do tea time, we always have a culture card for the country that we're talking about. And today, obviously, it's Argentina. So I have the Argentina culture card right here. And you can see it's two, pe two little children tango dancing. So we're just going to read some fun facts about Argentina. And then I'll interview my dad. And if you guys have any questions... For my tatu, on the bottom of the screen, there is a question mark. And if you guys want to send any questions, I will uh, press it and then I'll answer some, or we'll answer some questions together. Matias! Matias from oh, Argentina! Emerson's brother, right? Yes, we have Very another good. cousin. Saludos, saludos, uh, <laughs> Matias. <laughs> yes. He says, hola, with a lot of Argentine flags. All right. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> My kids want to win and are fighting. The boys have a flag to post. Okay. So right now, the next person to type in the Argentine flag will win some mate cocido. The mate in the tea bag. So I'm going to keep my eye on the screen. The first person to type in 
the Argentine flag, and I already see some, but right now, after I've said it, okay, estamos todos los hermanos. Emerson, Kevin, y Matias. Hola, hola, oh, hola. Oh, Kevin. Yes. And then there's a, third, a fourth one. Who is the fourth one? Emerson, Kevin, and Matias. And there's the fourth point, but there, I think there's just three of them are together Must right now. Must be in school or something. Yes, or maybe on the farm. Oh, there's no farm. school, all right. Yeah. <laughs> Must be taking siesta. <laughs> Some siesta, right? <laughs> Julie, I saw your flag. Charnel, I saw your flag. So, you guys, right now, we're going to write a, read a fun fact from Argentina. Most of you should know this, and if you don't, you're going to relearn it. The capital of Argentina is... Buenos Aires. Yes, Buenos Aires. And some famous foods from Argentina are the parilla. And Tatu, what is the parilla? Parillada, they call it. Yeah. Parillada. Anytime that you drive by the highways in Buenos Aires, all the way north or south, you can see all these restaurants full of barbecues. Parillada means barbecue. Uh, Argentina used to be the number one in beef country yes. there. Up, up to this day, they have a lot of cattle. South, south of Argentina, the climate is ideal for the cattle. Anyway, so parillada means when you get, order a barbecue and they bring uh, the, with the charcoal underneath, yeah. nice and warm, and you can eat uh, the ribs, chicken, sausage, and also they have like uh, blood sausage which some yeah. people use I, I don't like very much but some people are used to that yeah and what do they usually put on top of the um, asado which is the meat oh it's chimichurri 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 <laughs> and my tias make the great chimichurri my mom makes chimichurri everyone in the family makes chimichurri if you have some type of connection with the argentine culture you gotta have chimichurri and if not, you got to learn how to make it. Um, Joan. Joan is the other fourth brother. Oh, he, Joan. Yeah, yes. Joan. He must be the youngest one, right? I think he's a third, right? And he's on El Campo with Jorge. So oh, he's with, with Jorge, He's on the right? El Campo, yeah. Yeah, he's helping his dad. Yes. So we're talking about our cousins on the farm in Argentina. I oh, love yeah. It. When I was 12 years old, my brother was teaching me how to drive a tractor. Can you believe Now this guy probably is helping his dad there in the farm. Yes, and they do such a great job. Um, we were talking about parishada. Another, some other famous foods are empanadas. And my whole family makes empanadas. My cousins make it, my tias make it. Oh yeah, empanadas are very popular from Argentina and you can make uh, chicken empanadas, um, beef empanadas, and some are making uh, vegetable empanadas. Vegetable and papas, some Papa. potatoes, yeah. Yes, different. Also, my, one of my dad's favorites um, is alfajores. And if you had to describe what alfajores is, it's a what? It's a type of... Yeah, two cookies uh, stick together with dulce de leche in between yes. and then coconuts around <gasps> because the the dulce de leche attracts the glues the coconut yes and it's delicious you should try that yes if you haven't seen those de leche it's right here the most popular <laughs> alfajor is havana. havana when you go to buenos, buenos aires look for havana even at the airport they will sell you a dozen of alfajores. Yes. We have a couple comments. Nancy says she loves empanadas. Julie says she, veggie empanadas. Sounds good. Tia Lydia, the, she's liking the show. Thank you, Tia Lydia. We love you. Mwah. Oh, hello there. My sister in, yes. in Charlotte, North Carolina. Yes. So we ha we are in the country and we are out of the country on here at Tea Time. Kevin Skarlachuk. Hello again. Kevin, oh, that's <laughs> Las Breñas, Chaco. That's the north of Argentina. Oh, yeah, that's right, Buenos right? Aires. Yes. So we talked about some famous foods in um, Argentina. And, of course, the mate, which is our tea time today. And right now, my dad, we always have a musical instrument of the week at tea time. So I decided, why not showcase the accordion? Because when my dad came to america he came uh when he was 18 years old and i'll have him share some of that because we do have questions but we'll do that after we play 
my dad brought um, a guitar and he brought this accordion, you guys. This, uh, this accordion plus a guitar that I still have and I use and it was the first guitar I learned to play. And right now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna move this candle so we don't burn anything. Don't worry, I'll bring it back so when we end tea time, I'll blow it out. And I'm going to move some stuff away and we're gonna put a little book and we are gonna play a song called, what's the song called, Datu? Uh, happy day. Happy day. And this is an old hymn and I learned this because of my dad and I learned this instrument because of my dad because he brought it to America and it was in the closet and it gave me the opportunity to learn it. Um, so we're going to, wait, let me get set up. My strap is tangled. So let me get mine set up here. <laughs> okay. We start uh, from the top. Here. Yes. Okay. I'll follow you that way. in some music notes right now any music notes anything musical i will give you i'll send some mate cocido in the mail who's it gonna be it sounded wonderful my kids are enjoying tea time love it we have my friend nicole um from oh no that's not nicole from indiana we have someone from indiana coming in beth charnel i see you guys music Oh my goodness, that's you. I am going to be sending you, Nicole, that is not, no, um, Nicole, that is you. I'm so sorry, Nicole, I will be sending you some tea. So right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, click on this and there are questions for my dad. Okay. Okay, Carol says, what does tatu mean? I failed to start like this. I was supposed to tell you guys about this. So, Tatu is a nickname for father in what language, Tatu? Uh, in Ukrainian. Yes. And so, it, it's a nickname for Papa. Papa, which Papa. you guys know what Papa is, right? So, I have always called my father Tatu because it's a nickname for dad in Ukrainian. Okay, now the next question is... When can the Sullivans have tea with you? Charnel wants to have tea. Charnel, we are going to make that happen very soon. But you know what? We're all having tea together right now. Even though we're not together in person, I, I'm so happy that tea time can reunite us. But we can go to Lake Arrowhead and have tea time there, Yes. Right? Yes. And Valerie lives in Lake Arrowhead. Right. Now, Makalani is asking... Why did you leave Argentina? What made you come to America and how old were you? Oh, I see. That's a very important yes. question. Yeah, Good I question, was going to college and <laughs> in the meantime, we, we sneak in into a theater and they would show the movies from the United States. I was impressed when I saw 50,000, 70,000 in auditorium and when they make that uh, parade uh, around the, the stadium i said wow we didn't we don't have this in argentina so when i was about 17 i had a cousin there somewhere in san francisco he sent me pictures 
Ooh, and he also came from Paraguay. Send me a picture playing in the snow with his car. And I said, I better go. I have two brothers, older brothers that can help my dad. And I'm going to try to venture at 18 years old. I wasn't even 18. And they told me, how come you're so young you came to the United States? Well, I was impressed with the United States. And my impression was, if I don't like it, I'll go back. Which many people went back, went back. Because they can get didn't get used to or something. But ever since, it was 1964, in about 20 of June, which is about, today is the 17th, right? Right. 16th 16 of June. So that 1964, and um, here's another question that my dad sort of answered, but not really. How many um, kids were in the family? You were one of how many? I was the youngest of the boys. And then there's four sisters. So there's three brothers and four sisters. So can you imagine uh, coming up, b being born in a large family from the farm in Argentina, and he was the first one from the family to come to America. And because of you, then one sibling came, and then another, another. one. <laughs> My father came to visit after a year I was here in San Francisco, and he liked it, he liked it. He, I would go to, the cherries plantation and, and other places. And uh, he would uh, be impressed because he comes from Belarus in, uh, in Europe. And the, the weather is ideal like California. So after visiting here, he went back, sold his farm and the house and came uh, to join us with my two sisters, Elena and Lydia. Yes. And then eventually my brother Pablo came and then my sister Esperanza came, my older sister Elvira came, but it wasn't the liking. Yeah, so Elvira, we have part of the family, of course, is still in Argentina. So it's so nice. We have family that stayed in Argentina and we have family that moved out to the U.S. And I should have started with this earlier, but my, um, my tatu, his father was from Belarus and his mother my grandmother from ukraine from ukraine correct and yeah. they immigrated to argentina why because of the war right oh yeah the, the, the germans were attacking i remember my aunt was telling me because she was a little older than my mom and she she remembered the german coming into the house give me your milk give me the cheese anything i said so then they decided to migrate, and there was a lot of immigration to Brazil, Argentina, and Paraguay, and Uruguay. Yeah. So that's a little, I mean, our family has so many stories. Thank you so much. Oh my gosh, Amy, thank you. Thank you for, for making the time to tune in. And I'm going to still answer these questions. Makalani has a question. What is Tatu's favorite Argentinian food? Okay, what is Tatu's favorite Argentinian food? What's your favorite Argentinian food? Oh, I see. It's the barbecue. The barbecue. One. You yeah, can't go wrong. Wherever you go, barbecue. Oh, yeah. Sometimes we go in the middle of the night and we eat barbecue. Yes. Espy Nasuk just joined. Oh, hi, Espy. Say, say hi to Mike. He just called me. I, I'm not in po no position to answer <laughs> his call, but... Thanks, uh, SP. <laughs> My dad's a busy man. He's getting all these calls during live. I mean, I know how he feels. <laughs> okay. Okay. Now, you guys, I have some more questions. This is so exciting. Okay. Let's see. Kim asks, does Tatu know how to tango? Did you ever learn how to tango? tango. That's a great question, Kim. <laughs> you know, it's amazing. We come from a background where dance, it was no, no, no. It was a no, no. Yeah. In fact, we were discussing whether Tanya's wedding should allow dancing, right? Yes. yes. But then everything changed, the culture changed and everything. So that was my original, uh, I had to dance with my daughter, you know? Yes, <laughs> so. yes. And in fact, you know what? Well, growing up, um, I mean, until I got to college was when I got to take some dance classes. And before, um, when I went to college, or I mean, when went to Argentina in college, during my college years, I did take some tango classes with my friend Rosalinda so that we could try to tango in Argentina. But yes, later on in life, 
dancing became more acceptable in our family. So thank God for that, right? I think there's one or two more questions. And then you guys, we're going to end with some jokes. Um, what does Tatu miss most about Argentina? Oh, the there... first uh, six months, it was the air of Argentina. Oh. I felt like uh, it's so sad here and things like that. But eventually with friends, and uh, I remember my first car that I bought was a Volkswagen. Here? Uh, yes, in San Francisco. What uh, color? What color? A red Volkswagen. Red Volkswagen. Be Beetle Volkswagen, right. And I drove that to uh, Lake Tahoe, Yosemite, all by myself, just venture, what's going on here and there. Of course, uh, back in 65, 66, there's no way it's like today. This is yeah. completely, so many freeways. Even the freeway of 101 freeway had uh, stoplights. I remember City of Commerce. Really? Yeah, this, you got to stop in uh, Washington <laughs> and then Slash on another stop. Now you go 210, 210 and 110, right? So yeah. That's uh, up the hill. 605, 405, oh, I, 105 too. Yeah. And the five, and, and, and the, there's toll road even, so it's different. Yeah, so can you imagine, where, my dad's talking about there used to be stoplights on the 101. That would not work today, or would it? I don't know. Okay, so if there's, and I don't think there's any more questions. If you guys want to live in for a joke or you would like to tell a joke, please request. But you know what I'm going to start with right now is I love your dad with the freeways. Kim is enjoying the stories about freeways. Oh, the freeways. Okay, <laughs> <Yeah>. we'll start. <laughs> so she, she was saying oh, she was enjoying I the... forgot the 71, <laughs> the 91. <laughs> The 243 there in 91. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So, Tatu, every time at tea time, at the end of tea time, we always do the bowl of jokes. And this is a bowl of jokes. And these jokes have been submitted by kids or adults, but they're like dad or kid jokes. So they're easy. So I'm going to pick one out and read it for my dad. And instead of playing my big accordion for the punchline, I have a mini accordion right here and we're going to play this one for the punchline. So you just wait. Okay. So I'm going to pick a joke for my dad and the joke is from, okay. This joke is submitted by Rosina in North Brunswick, New Jersey, and she's married to Benny Vashai. Oh yeah. I remember her. Yes. Right. So this is the joke. I love this joke. It's so perfect for right now. Why was 2019 afraid of 2020? Why was 2019 afraid of 2020? Should I read? I'll, I'll, I'll read it. <laughs> they had a fight and 2021. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke, right? right. You guys. Speaking of jokes, my dad is a, a very, he's got lots of jokes, but we may not be able to get into them because some of them are long stories. <laughs> so hi, Chris. How are you? Hi, Nicole. Okay, guys, we're going to end our tea time with Tanya. If you guys have any more questions, let me know. But Dr. Wu, there, is there anything else that you'd like to like share about Argentina or anything else? Oh, yes. Uh, some people are wondering, where is Argentina? Yes, that's Argentina a great question. Argentina is way down south, the tip of South America. The yes. continent is divided into three, the Central America, North America, and South America. So if you talk about Argentina, it's the uh, southernmost part, and it's, uh, the country of Chile is almost together with uh, Argentina from the north all the way to south. In the south we have Ushuaia. It's a very popular uh, where people take off to see the Antarctica. Antarctica. Antarctica, yes. yes. Because over here we have Arctica. Over there in the south we have Antarctica. Antarctica, yes. And you know what? I always thought that Islas Malvinas or the Falkland Islands, they taught us in school is Argentina. And back in 76, 75, I think there was a war. And no, it's not Argentina. It's England. England. Really? Yes, yeah, so it's not Argentina. 
And do you think it's still like that today? It's still up to date because they leased it for a few years and now it's their owner. Really? Yeah. That's, wow. For you scholars, you should discover yes. what's going on, right? Yes. And, and Kim says Falkland Islands is on my lips. I mean, lip, lips, list. <laughs> it's visit, on my list right? to visit. It's and like... she says, yes, England. Yes. Not Argentina, right? It's, I didn't know that. Kim, what a fun find. And my dad, I didn't know that. See, I'm always learning, right? Um, my friend Chris, my good friend Chris, Chris from um, high school, he is um, saying Evita. Don't oh, cry Evita. for me, Argentina. Right. Oh, when I yes. was uh, in the first, second grade, Evita died. Oh, and they sent toys to every student. I, I, you know what I got? It's a car, race car. Nice, like Fangio. You probably heard of Fangio, very popular uh, car uh, race driver in Argentina. And I remember it. every student got a gift from the government because Evita passed away. But you probably know about Evita, about Don't Cry For, for Me, me Argentina. Argentina. <laughs> yes. So I always remember my dad said I got a toy from Evita because the, of that. When she passed away, when she died, the government gave the toys to the kids and my dad got one. <laughs> That's so great. And um, there was one more thing I wanted to say. So my dad was explaining uh, the geography of Argentina. And what about the flag? This is the flag of Argentina. And I know Kim had asked about what did you miss most? And you had mentioned the skies of Argentina, the right? The skies, yes. Uh -huh. And if you guys don't know this, the flag of Argentina, the blue and the white, oh, represents... Okay. Oh, they can see it, right? Yes, they can see it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah look, you see There it? you go. That's Argentina. Yes. It, yes. it looks like Nicaragua. Or a little bit. A little bit. It, but we, ours has a sun a in the sun, middle. A sun. Un sol. El sol, right? El sol, right. And the sun represents um, the sun, right? And I was reading about it in my flag book because I have a book of flags over there. And um, in fact, I, I will show you guys. This is a book of flags that we sometimes use. But um, my dad was saying that he missed the skies of Argentina. When you go there... They're truly blue and white, so clear. Oh, yes, yeah, very, very and clear. And the air, the air is so clear. And so the sun actually represents, I think, in the year of 1810, when uh, there was independence and it was like a freedom. So you guys know what the flag looks like. And that's, there you have it. <laughs> okay, you guys, I think we're going to wrap it up. If you guys have any other questions, let us know. But right now, I want to say thank you so much to my tatu. And we have, los está mirando junto con nosotros. Matias said they're all, they're all watching together. Oh, with this, the new technology. Yeah. Amazing. Saludos, saludos. <laughs> saludos, yes. Muchos yes. saludos yes. de la tía yes. y baby. el tío. Yes. Okay, you guys. So we're going to finish and I'm going to finish with my little jingle. It's tea time with Tanya. And on this little one, I'll go, it's tea time. Wait, it's tea time with Tanya. So join me if you wanna. <laughs> okay, you guys. I want to say thank you to my tatu. All right. I love you so much, Tatu. For Father's Day is coming up, right? Yes. Sunday is Father's Day. Don't forget to wish your father a beautiful Father's Day and spend time. And I want to say thank you for my Tatu to spend time and, and sharing a little bit of where he came from and having tea time together. Don't forget to share and care wherever you are. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> oh.